today I will be talking about physiological correlates of value-based decision-making between affected memories. In our research group, one of the key questions that we are interested in is understanding how ketamine works as an antidepressant. Currently, there are two hypotheses about how ketamine works. Either it's the effect on reward processing systems or affected memory processing systems. If we want to study affected memory processes, we can either rely on autobiographical memories, which are negative and positive events that people experienced in the past, or we can also induce memories experimentally. Today I will talk about a computational behavioral assay that we developed for this purpose. Here we conducted a, a between subject study across three days in which people were asked to learn abstract reward associations through reinforcement learning. After that we put people into a wheel of fortune draw to induce mood experimentally. For example, if people lose money they would feel upset about it or if people win money they would feel happy about it and after that they continued learning more abstract reward associations in these mood states. Our learning results indicated that the effective valence of the Wheel of Fortune outcomes does not influence reinforcement learning performance. This is something good when we want to isolate affective memory biases. At least 24 hours later um, than the final day of learning, we asked participants to make decisions between these abstract reward associations, also shown here in different fractals. So participants job was to choose between these shapes and bank money in relation to the reward probabilities associated with these shapes recalling from their memory. For robustness of this behavioral process we conducted two different experiments. In the first experiment participants learned about 14 different associations. In the second experiment they learned 24. Even in the simpler experiment with 14 reward associations, one could have 182 different pairwise comparisons, so the memory space is fairly large. If you rely on individual pairwise comparisons and compute how, how people prefer between these um, comparisons, we can arrive at a heat map which would, which would look something like this, and we can infinitely look at this behavior behavioral results and could not really understand what the emerging behavioral pattern would be. To overcome such issues we turned to computational modeling and we used models coming from behavioral economics which revealed that people are overall more positively biased in their value-based recall. During this decision process we also collected pupilometry and analyzed this data in two different ways. Before the decision onset we showed evidence to suggest a people constriction which is in relation to the expected values of the shapes that people choose and you can see that this happens much earlier than the decision onset shown in this red line here. After the decision has been made, um, pupil dilation seems to encode and respond differ differentially to the reward values of the shapes which were encoded after winning in the Wheel of Fortune shown in these green lines. If we look at the crossover pattern of these green lines from low probability to high probability shapes, it closely reflects the crossover pattern that we observe in the probability weighting curves from low probability to high probability, which kind of indicated that these behavioral and physiological signals might be related. When we computed an area under the curve measure of positive memory bias, and when we computed uh, the delta between these pupillary traces, we showed that these were significantly correlated with each other. This is one of the computational assays that we will use to understand how ketamine works as an antidepressant and how it modulates affective memories.